Why are we still using workbooks in implementations? And is there a better way? Let's get into it now. I want to talk about the sexiest topic imaginable. That's right, success factors implementation methodology. I've given this a lot of thought after doing 27 Employee Central implementations. Over those 27 implementations, the solution itself has evolved so much. It's light years better in so many ways. But you know what hasn't changed that much? Implementation methodology, specifically implementation workbooks. For those of you who are not familiar with these, the workbooks are essentially all of the system's settings and features in the success factors, but just in Excel form. Let's begin by looking at this methodology diagram. I pulled this slide this morning from the official EC kickoff slide deck on PartnerEdge. You can see that even after all this time, Excel workbooks are still supposed to be the first step in the iteration process. Customers fill these in after some training. Then consultants turn the workbook settings into system builds. For iteration two and three, it's rinse and repeat. Well, why is it like this? It's a holdover to the implement requirements from a decade ago. Let's take a trip back in time to 2014. Guardians of the Galaxy was number one at the box office. Pharrell Williams had the number one song of the year in Happy. And success factors consultants were filling in one of these when it was time to build out the customer's systems. This is an XML file and was the basis for all configuration in the system. Back then, we would give customers the workbook to have them fill it in, and then we would tediously update the XML. And when we were done updating the XML, we would pray that we had done everything properly and load into success factors and see how we did. Now let's fast forward to today. Now we have managed business configuration, configure object definition, and other tools. If you want that field made required and moved up in the order, no problem. No more XML. We can do it right away. Not only that, but we don't start from scratch anymore. When I start a new customer, I can start with a system that embodies the best practices for success factors. These best practice builds aren't perfect as we will talk about later, but they're a really good start. Customers can start looking at their system right away. Well, why does it matter that we're still using workbooks? The process must be working okay. We're up to 6,000 EC customers, so we're not experiencing riots during our implementations, I agree, but I do think we could do better. Here are the three problems I see with the current process. Number one, instead of learning the system, customers have to spend time learning the workbooks and trying to interpret them. Workbooks to me are harder to understand than the system itself. Better to spend time training customers on the system. I'm going to say something controversial here. I feel like we spend too much time trying to have the consultants understand the, the customer's business. Instead, we should be spending way more time upfront helping the customers understand the solution that they have bought. I call this success factors intended design. As in, here's how success factors intends for a specific HR process to work. We need to start this right away to orient the customers on the system. And spending time on workbooks takes away from that. We want customers to understand the system so that they can craft their future. And consultants can be there as guides and advisors that way. Number two, workbooks tell you what was done, but not why. I often help support customers one or two years after their implementation. When I ask why something happened, they often can't tell me. And you know what won't provide me any answers? The workbooks. It just shows me what the configuration looked like back then. Workbooks really are not designed to capture this information. It shouldn't be this way. And then number three, workbooks aren't really designed to be maintained post go live. If you think about it, this is the opposite of what a cloud system needs. Cloud systems are meant to be flexible and to change over time. So there's no sustainable framework to document system changes unless the customer invents one. This means that most often the rationale for changes that happen post go live aren't documented anywhere aside from in an email. Okay, so Brandon, how would you change things? Well, funny, you should ask. I do have thoughts. Let's go through them now. 
How would I fix things? I have eight easy steps. Step one, consolidate success factors, best practices. Going to seem like a strange place to start, I know, but stay with me here. This is the foundation. There is just so much fragmentation in success factors documentation. Just for EC and platform, I need to know 38 implementation guides, 21 implementation design principles, nine architectural leading practices. On top of that, there are 8,923 support KBAs. While some of those are just errors getting fixed, many really do constitute best practice and really should go into the implementation guides. This needs to be consolidated some, somehow is it's damn near impossible to keep up with it all, even if you're trying to. I'm planning on doing a separate video on this topic in the future. Stay tuned. Step two, take those consolidated best practices and use them to build out best practice systems. I mentioned earlier that Success Factors provides best practice system builds as a starting point for customers. Those best practice builds have come a long way. Still, if you consider best practices the blueprints of the best practice builds, uh, if we have fragmented best practice blueprints documentation, then it's not surprising that best practice builds are not always perfect. So update the best practice builds with the best practice configuration, and then success factors keep them up to date for every release. But I would also take it a step further than that. The best practice builds are really only available to be seen when a system is brand new. You can't use or refer to a best practice build once your implementation is underway. Success Factors should also provide read-only access to best practice systems that consultants and customers can access at any time to see what best practices look like. Step three, for the start of the implementation cycle, educate customers on the best practice system build functionality. As I mentioned before, the start of the implementation should be designed to help the customer understand their solution. The customer is already an expert on their processes. By the time we leave, they should also be an expert on success factors. Spend more time explaining success factors intended design for the system. This does not happen if you start out everything with an Excel workbook. Step four, project documentation should focus on why, not what. Now that we are starting with true best practice build instead of someone taking an order at a restaurant, Documentation can explain what was happened and why. Uh, we don't need an Excel workbook to tell us that personal information screen will contain a first name and a last name. Every implementation does, and the customers will see that because they are starting with a best practice build system. The documentation standard, therefore, would become, if I know what best practices are and I look at the customer systems, what questions would I have and how do I answer those? and use the documentation to address documentation in that way. Step five, embed the key documentation into the system itself. It's impossible for system documentation to get lost if it's part of the system. My documentation recommendation is that Success Factors makes this a priority across all areas of configuration. There are some places in Success Factors today where this kind of documentation is possible. Permission roles, configure object definition, and business rules are good examples of where descriptions can be allowed, but it should be everywhere. I've created an enhancement request uh, to ask success factors to do this and to prioritize this. Please add your vote if you agree. Step six, if you need to document what was done, export it from the system. I understand that one of the key reasons for the workbook in the first place is sign off. You can't sign off on a system per se, but you can sign off on Excel workbooks to show off all the configuration. But why do we need to dual maintain this information when it's already there in the system? The system was just tested and passed. Can't we export the definitions themselves? The answer is yes. Ideally, success factors would build out an export tool that would allow you to create the workbooks, but I know of at least one partner who has built out the ability to create workbooks from the system configuration. This is how we can easily enable sign-off. Okay, so that's it. My completely unsolicited implementation methodology suggestions. I should have taken up a hobby like woodworking or interpretive dance, but no, I decided to spend time on methodology. And now you have watched it. Sorry about that. My hope this, uh, this video triggers some conversations. I'm just a consultant, so I have no power to change things, but hopefully someone who does have power will take some of these ideas and makes things better. I would hate for 2034 to roll around and we're still 
working through Excel workbooks, even if it's only our AI personas that are doing so. If you've enjoyed this video for some reason, please like and subscribe. Thanks a lot.